Hi, I'm Jenny Connor, an early childhood educator from Tasmania, and I'm here with Carmel. Hello, I'm Carmel Richardson, and I'm an early childhood educator from Canberra. We are going to be talking about reflective practice as an umbrella heading, Carmel, and that's one of the five principles of the Early Years Learning Framework. Mm -hmm. And I guess generally it covers building learning communities with children and staff and, mm -hmm. and educators and families, and engaging with important questions of philosophy and ethics. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your approach to these issues. Well, I think having a personal philosophy is very important. I think you have to be very aware of your beliefs and values around the way you think about children, the way you think about yourself as an early childhood edu educator, and the way you think about the communities in which you're located and how you respond to those in, in respectful and ethical ways. So I suppose significant things for me in my philosophy is the way that I think about the work I do with children and I think about children as being very capable, as being very much a part of their communities, as being very much a part of you know, wider, wider community values as well. So uh, philosophy is significant and philosophy is something that I think develops over time. I, th I think you begin your practice with a particular philosophical belief and that grows as you grow as an educator. So what does that mean for engaging children with these bigger questions that are philosophical and ethically based? Well, I think you have to come from a standpoint of believing that children are stakeholders, that children have a right to be involved in these bigger questions, that children have a particular world view that's important in acknowledging and recognising. And so big, some of the bigger issues we cover in the work that we do with children are around um, equity, inclusion, diversity. We particularly focus on reconciliation. We particularly focus on involving children um, in understanding their relationship to Indigenous Australia and in, in understanding that they have a shared history with Indigenous Australia and this is very important for them to know and be a part of. So within our philosophy that's very much uh, engaged with issues to do with social justice, anti-bias, inclusion and diversity, that has to inform our practice. So it's, it's one thing saying in your f philosophy statement, if you like, that you believe in these things. The next step is how you uh, move those beliefs into your day-to-day -day practice. And can you give us an example of that, how you live in a non-tokenistic, in a genuine way, how you live respect? Mm -hmm. Um, that seems like a hard thing to answer in some ways, but I think if you can think about a pedagogy of relationships, um, that if you can think that respect, diversity, inclusion can be embraced and embedded in the relationships you have within your particular community and beyond of course, but we're talking about the immediacy of the community to which we belong, which involves the teachers the children, the families and the wider community in which that uh, particular setting is located. You realise that the relationships we have with each other, with the children, families uh, and the community are really significant because it's through relationships, it's through that pedagogy of relationships of getting to know people and them getting to know you as well. It's never just about, tell me about you, what can I learn about you? It's about, this is me, who are you? Mm. What questions can I ask of you and what questions can you ask of me? And I think when we get to know people through respectful, thoughtful uh, relationships and engagement in those relationships, we can break down a lot of those stereotypical images that foreclose on inclusion and equity. So it breaks down stereotypes and it, it puts people on, on, a, on a human level with a great deal in common. And what about the, the whole area of reconciliation and with young children? Can you give us a, a specific example of, of how you bring that to the foreground? Okay. Within our centre, we have a strong philosophical view that it's important for children to be engaged with um, issues to do with reconciliation. We have no children in our centre this year, for example, who identify as being Indigenous. And yet every child in our centre, and we have a very diverse cohort of children in our centre, knows that each day they are on Ngunnawal land. So one of the very simple ways of engaging with 
reconciliation with very young children is supporting them to understand the place in which they're situated and the relationship that place has to Indigenous Australian histories. So each day, each and every day at our centre, we acknowledge that we're on Ngunnawal land. We don't do this in a formal tokenistic way. We don't do, you know, um, a formal acknowledgement. But each day is part of our greeting um, ceremony, if you like, with the children. We acknowledge we're on Ngunnawal land and each of those children knows they're on Ngunnawal land every day. And on special occasions such as Sorry Day, what would you do then? We, we work up towards Sorry Day. Mm. So leading up to Sorry Day, we talk to the children about Sorry Day and what it means. Now, some people would say, but these children are only two and three and four and five years of age. How can you explain to them what Sorry Day means? And this is an issue that I've thought long and hard about over a number of years. Uh, it's very hard to explain to young children that Sorry Day is about the pain and anguish that Indigenous people have suffered because their own children have been removed from them. Um, but we do talk to children about families and what family means and that when children are denied access to their family it is a very painful uh, experience. So we, t we explain to children that Sorry Day is feeling sorry for the pain that Indigenous people have felt over many, many years. Um, we, we often use story and narrative with the children to, ex to help explain some of these issues. Um, and some stories are really good for explaining that. We use the Vincent Mignari story, for example, uh, to explain issues about ab Indigenous land rights mm. to children. And if children have a sense of the inequity that Indigenous people have suffered over many, many years, then explaining things like Sorry Day, more specific things to them, um, becomes much more accessible to them. So in our centre leading up to Sorry Day, um, it's preceded by weeks and months of talking about these sorts of issues. And then on Sorry Day, um, we might do something like having a smoking ceremony in our reconciliation garden, in our playground. And we're able to do that because we have close relationships. And again, I'll, I'll keep mentioning relationships because I think they are essential with Indigenous members of our local community who come along and share smoking ceremonies with us. Which are healing and cleansing ceremonies and a welcome and acceptance. They are healing and cleansing ceremonies. And one of our Indigenous friends, a man called Paul, who's been doing smoking ceremonies with us for six or seven and maybe eight years now, has explained to the children in very simple terms that being part of a smoking ceremony is very significant and that when they walk through the smoke, it's about being cleansed. And he has explained to them, it's like having your bad dreams taken away. Okay. And the children can relate to that. They know what that means and they know that it means something uncomfortable and painful is being removed. And I think it's a lovely and um, very accessible way of thinking about uh, a smoking ceremony as a healing process. Today we're doing the smoking ceremony because it's part of Reconciliation Week. The smoke, the special smoke coming from the green eucalyptus leaves, that smoke can go over our bodies and it carries away our bad dreams. I know, I'm letting you know again, <laughs> just so you remember. Okay. Some people might not know that. So the special, if you have a smell of these leaves, have a smell, just have a smell. I'll bring it around. No, it's coming to you. Can you smell, can you smell that, that smell that's coming off the leaves? Hi, smell. Hey, um, Does everyone remember Wayne? How could day? you forget him? <laughs> <laughs> and this is our friend Gary. Hi, Gary. Gary. Come Gary. and help us. Oh, I didn't introduce yeah. my other friend. This is <laughs> Andrew. And this is a man's insurance. Only men can play this. Okay. And what's it made out of? Wood. Wood. Three. Mahamud. Mahamud. And it's um, carved out by ants, by termites. See, there's a big hole right in the middle. Okay. And, uh, so, so Aboriginal people play this when they do dances and have meetings called corroborees. Can you say corroborees? Corroborees. Yeah. 
So what we're going to do is Andrew's going to play his didgeridoo while we walk through the smoke. You want to follow me, fellas? Here we go, we're going to go right through here.